Welcome to today's episode of Tech Talk, and today we're not actually going to fix anything on this video. So if you think you're going to get taught on how to fix something, well, this is not the video. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the inner workings of an old um, camcorder. This is an old Canon 8mm camera, and what we're going to look at is we're going to look at some of the problems that these cameras have. From looking at the mechanism. Because there are a lot of problems that the, these cameras had, but the, by far the biggest problem that we had with all of these 8mm cameras from the uh, late 80s in, into the 90s were failures of the SME capacitors, or the surface-mounted electrolytic capacitors, which are these silver cans here. The big problem that we had with these types of components was back in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, there was a worldwide shortage of electrolytic capacitors like this. Everybody was was struggling to make them because they were required to make smaller and smaller devices. And as the story goes, as I read in tech journals, I say it's a story because I, I don't know the amount of truth to this, but I'm sure that there's a fair a bit of truth to the story there was severe competition going on between the different manufacturers and everyone was trying to make smaller and smaller electrolytic capacitors there was a lot of espionage going on between the companies where there were secret formulas in the electrolytic and that's the the liquid which is basically a, a type of fish oil that's why if you smell the liquid that comes out of them they smell like fish the story goes on these surface mounted electrolytic capacitors is that a disgruntled employee that left one of the capacitor manufacturers stole the formula and took it to the competitor that he was hired at. The problem was he missed one of the key ingredients that was used in the chemical makeup of the electrolytic. It was a stabilizer of some type <clears throat> that kept the electrolytic in a pH neutral chemistry regardless whether the capacitor was charged or discharged. In a conventional wet cell battery, how you can measure your state of charge is the specific gravity of the electrolytic. And that changes by the, chemical, by the, by the amount of charge, it changes the actual gravity or the specific gravity, and it also changes the pH balance of the acid. In the case of a battery, it's acid. In the case of a capacitor, it's not acid. It's an oil-based electrolytic. Uh, older capacitors actually used to use oil, and in some cases they use PCB oil, which of course has been banned because of it being a carcinogen. The capacitors used in all these use a, a fish-based oil, but they have to make them chemically neutral so that they don't change pH when they're charged or discharged. And the problem with these problematic surface-mounted electrolytic capacitors, these are SME as we uh, refer to them in the industry as, was when they were sitting in a discharge state, the electrolytic became slightly base or slightly caustic. And what happened over time, and this was especially problematic with seldom used devices, such as camcorders. These are the devices that you would pull out at Christmas, use them for Christmas Day, then they'd sit in the case until you went on holidays or until one of the kids had a birthday party or something and you'd haul the camera out again and do some more recordings and then the thing would sit in its case for months on end. And the problem was when they sat in that discharge state, when there was no electrical charge applied to the capacitor, the electrolytic became slightly caustic or slightly base, slightly alkaline and it caused the metal conductors, the metal wires that connect to the outside world that go through a rubber plug to start to corrode. Eventually when the wire corroded enough, the electrolytic could start to leak out onto the board. And that caused what you see here. See these resistors here that are... The camera won't focus any closer, but you can see. 
If you look down by, I'm, I'm looking at a screen here, so I'm, it's kind of, where am I going? I got to go down <laughs> towards the camera. There. <laughs> it's hard to see because I'm, I'm 45 degrees off where the camera is. <clears throat> if you look down by this capacitor here, you'll actually see the discoloration on the circuit board. This capacitor has been leaking, as is its neighbor. And what it did was, when this now slightly alkaline electrolytic leaked out of the capacitors, it attacked the circuit board. Now these are a multi-layer board. It's not just traces on the top and traces on the bottom. No, these boards here are usually four layers thick. So they've got interconnect traces that connect to other points on the board. Like if you see some of these pads here, which don't have any connections on them, like in, where are we here, near that crystal? I guess we're down over here somewhere. I don't even know where we are. Down over here. See these pads here? These are actually through connections that are connecting to other layers of the board. They might be connecting to the opposite side of the board, but they could just as easily be connecting to some of the internal layers. What happened when this electrolytic leaked out of the capacitors is it would, it would get into and in between the layers of the board and actually start to eat the circuit board. So basically what I'm telling you is when you've got a, a, a circuit board like this, a multi-layer circuit board that's had capacitor failure on it, they are now basically a write-off. Yes, you can change them. And I have done that. I've changed capacitors. I used to cap cameras on a regular basis for people. Uh, back in the day when video cameras were really still very expensive, I'd have people bring cameras like the old uh, Sony CCD V5000, uh, which was one of the high eight cameras that that, that was uh, it looked like a professional camera. It looked like a like a broadcast camera, but smaller, with the VU meters and stuff on the side. And they'd come in and they'd say, "Well, I need my camera fixed. I I paid three thousand dollars, or I paid four thousand dollars for this camera, and it's you know three years old, four years old, and it's not working." I'll, I'll fix it, whatever it costs. And you'd quote them. You know, the board is a thousand dollars. You know, they don't want to change the board; they want to change the capacitors. So you spend hours, or in that case, I think the board it wasn't even available, the main board. But you, you'd you'd quote them. You'd say, "Well, we got to change every one of these capacitors. Every single one of these has to be changed. Not just the ones that are spewing their guts, because of one spewing its guts." The rest of them are also not far behind as far as spewing their guts. So you got to change them all. And that becomes vapor, very labor intensive. But I did. I In my career in electronics, I changed. I would change 80 capacitors on one camera. You take them out. You cut them. To take them out, you cut them off like this. And then you heat them up because you don't want to damage the circuit. You don't want to damage the foil that's underneath here. So then you, you cut them in half so that you can get them off the board without damaging the, the trace. Now that you've removed the capacitor, you can pry off. Well, if you look at some of my other videos, my DAT recorder. Um, videos for example, I actually go through and I change some of these capacitors in the head preamp um, because they can be changed and if you've only got a few of them, if you've only got two or three of them on a circuit and the board's not badly damaged then uh, yeah they can certainly be changed and either replaced with another surface mounted electrolytic or just take a conventional capacitor and nip the leads off and solder it down to the board but this is the easiest way to get these, these uh, capacitors off a circuit board without damaging the board. The last thing you want to do is put your soldering on here and try and pry them up. You're asking for trouble doing it that way. Another way that you can take them off is you can heat the entire board up, put it on a hot plate and basically bring the board up to temperature. And then once you bring them up to the, 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 the melting point of solder, you can lift them off. The, the problem with that is when you've got other components mounted on the other side of the board, what do you think is going to happen to them when you heat the board up? They're all going to fall off. So 
that's not the way to change them. The, the, the easiest and safest way to change these things is just to cut them, right? Just cut them off, cut the tops off like this, and then you can pull the base off like, oh, that one even actually came right off. You see, and they, they'll come off fairly clean when you do it that way. Let's try another one here. Where am I? We'll do that one right in front of this crystal here. Just get your cutters down nice and close and cut them. And then they can, will usually just peel right off the board. Sometimes you got to cut them again right down the middle so that the, uh, the pieces will lift off. But once you cut them, you can pull the guts of the capacitor off and usually usually what will happen is you'll just be left with a couple little pins stuck on the board here that you can now remove or in this case they actually came clean off that's the easiest way to remove these things if you're going to repair, repair uh, a device like this but if you've got a, a camera that these capacitors have failed on then there's a very good chance that you're not going to get it working again some of the symptoms uh, that you will experience with capacitor failure could be an all black picture, an all white picture, a picture with very little contrast, a picture that the, the colors look all fluorescent and almost like they are uh, pastel colors, very vibrant, bright colors, but very, very little, uh, very, very little detail. And basically what you're seeing is the, the luminance circuit has, has gone south, but the chroma is still working. Uh, so you're seeing the color portion of the picture, but the black and white portion is uh, is gone. Uh, could be either uh, could be either like looking like pastel colors over a white background, or it could look like them over a black background or a gray background. Or your picture could be unstable. It could be tearing. Could be rolling either vertically or horizontally. Um, you could have a tracking issue where the the, the tape can't track, and it be, because in the servo circuit they have these capacitors as well. So if your motor speed is unstable, and I'm referring to the capstan motor here, or the drum motor here, if the motor speeds are unstable, well, if the drum motor is hunting, your picture is gonna, your picture is gonna uh, either shake back and forth horizontally, or it's gonna go right into a horizontal roll, one way or the other. If your drum or your capstan motor is out of speed, the tape is either going to play too fast or too slow and you're going to have lines in the picture. These can all be affected by these surface mounted electrolytic capacitors. And there's enough of them in here. I mean, they're in every circuit. They're in the video circuit. They're in the chroma circuit. They're in the head amplifier circuit. They're in the servo circuit for the drum. They're in the servo circuit for the capstan motor. They're everywhere. They're in the power supply. The power supply ones, when they go bad, typically you'll end up with a bunch of, of thin little horizontal lines across the picture. And that's usually the DC to DC converter, which in many cases is underneath a metal cover like this. I, I don't know if that's where it is on this particular unit or not, but uh, DC to DC converters are usually are usually shielded on, all, on both sides. Or they could be in a separate metal box. I believe the DC to DC converter is actually this right here. Yeah, on this camera, this is the DC to DC converter. It takes the battery voltage, the 6 volts from the battery, and it produces the voltage that the camcorder requires. If I were to break this open, which I will, I'll just pop the top off this thing, we'll see that this is also loaded with electrolytic surface-mounted troublesome capacitors. Actually, this one has conventional capacitors in it, but they still fail. This one's got the through-hole type. These ones are much more reliable than the surface mounted ones, but they still do give us problems. So there's the DC to DC converter on this. These ones dry out. When they dry out, you get lines in the picture or no picture at all, or they can cause other symptoms like no color. Uh, you just have to measure your voltage, just put a scope on the, out, on the output pins and see if there's any ripple on it. But that's, uh, that's the basic uh, problems that these things have. If you've got one of these old camcorders and You'll know the ones, the Canon ones that kind of look like that with the rotating grip. Uh, these were very problemat problematic. In the Sony line, it was like the Sony CCD F, uh, was it 35, 35, uh, 45, 55, the, the S7, the sports camera. Remember the yellow, that, that yellow camera that was waterproof? Full of these electrolytic capacitors, the V5000. Uh, uh, all the CCD V series cameras uh, uh, were full of them. I think even the TR series. 
It wasn't until the mid 90s that they, when these things all started failing in the field, that the manufacturers clued in that there was a problem and uh, started to do something about it. Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a quick look inside one of these cameras. This is just a parts record. As you can see, I've picked this thing pretty much clean. The head's been picked off this thing. The, um, the uh, spindle motors or the, sp uh, the spindles have been taken off. Still got a brake band in here that's good. Might get used for something. But uh, I just hang on to this chassis just for, uh, just for, for picking parts off of it because uh, you can't get these things anymore. Can't get the parts for these things anymore. So I just hang on to that for, for that aspect. And uh, say this video was just to give you guys a quick look inside one of these things and why you don't want to try fixing it because uh, that's a lot of capacitors to change and there's a good chance that if they've leaked and they've puked their guts all over the board and you'll see it because it's all you, know, you can tell you can see it you can see where the color has changed they've discolored the board from it that is an indication that the board itself is being attacked the copper on the board is being attacked and once it gets into the internal layers and corrodes connections, it's game over for the board. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you shortly.